Hey guys, it's Ryan. If you've ever been using the package manager in Unity and you've seen that you have these packages from Unity, which you can tell because it's com.unity, input system, uh, that's not from, writer, editor, test framework, wouldn't it be nice if you could post your own code in Git and you can pull it in here as well? Maybe a controller package, for example, that you want to reuse in all of your 2D projects. This is one that I've made and I use in the game that I'm working on right now. And it's really nice because I built it during a game jam and I can reuse it here without having to copy the code over. Um, and it's really nice. So the first step is to go to GitHub, create a new repository. Let's call it sample unity package. You want it to be private probably to start with. And we do want to add a unity uh, git ignore. Awesome. So this is all created. Now we want to go to unity and create a new project in the Unity version you want to use. Doesn't matter if it's 2D or 3D, but I like using 2D. So let's call this one also sample Unity package. Now that we have the Unity project open and created, we're gonna open up a either a terminal or you can do this in source tree, anywhere you like doing this. We're gonna clone that repository we just made. Now where you're gonna put it is under the assets folder. And as you can see, I'm in the project we just made under my Unity projects folder. What we're gonna do is go under assets and this is where we're gonna do the Git clones. Let me go back to my repository. Let's get the HTTPS link for that. And I'm gonna do a Git clone with, with that link. All right, so now we have sample Unity package. Let's go in there we have a .git folder and the .git ignore that we got from the repository. Now let's go back over to Unity. And this is where we're gonna put all of our code. It's not gonna go in the assets folder. It's gonna go directly into this one because this is where Git is pointing to. And for all packages for Unity that you're making that will be in Git, we will need to follow the following structure. You can read this within the manuals, but I, I'm gonna show it to you anyways. You'll need to make a runtime folder this is the bare minimum, by the way. Make a runtime folder, and then you'll also need to make a package.json, which will define information about this package, which I find that easiest to do from here. I have the pro project open in Windows Explorer, and I'll do the same thing. I will make the file. Let's go into that folder that we'd made earlier from Git. Same one. Let's go create a new file. Call it package.json. Yes. So this really is the bare minimum that you need in the package.json for it to be viable or valid for Unity to read it. You'll need the name of the package, which in this case needs to be a reverse package domain name kind of thing. Com.proreinator.sampleunity package is the name of this one. The version of this package, which also needs to be a version semantics, which is defined, you know, in most software um, standards, but also in the Unity documentation. The display name, this is going to be the display name that shows uh, in your package manager. So if I go over to a project where I actually have one of these in the window where you see your repository, this is one that I've made. It's going to be this, ProRinator Controllers 2D. That's going to be the what's considered the display name here. The description would be more detail on what this package has. Same idea though, in here, uh, you know, this is the display name. It's gonna have the package name and then right here, a collection of 2D controller scripts that you typically blah, blah, blah. That's gonna be where the description goes. This is gonna be the Unity version that your package at least supports, as well as the author and email and your website if you would like to do that. And that information also pops up here as well as, uh, was it email? Email's not there, but that's what this would look like. You will notice here that I have dependencies that are shown this is if you have dependencies in that package. I can always link the documentation in the description below if you'd like to see it, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. It's not super important. You'll also see this samples section as well. You can create some folders that you specify as samples that you can then click to import into your project. And you'll see down here that under the package I have and the version, there is a folder with some sample scenes and some sample input actions for this package. Very useful if you want to show someone how your package works. So we're done with this. This is all we need to get this package set up and ready to go. So let's go ahead and get this into Git and get it pushed up. 
Well, actually, before we do that, let's go over to the package and add a sample class. So let's say you have your, uh, you know, sample tool kit, let's say. So here's that class we just made. Let's get rid of all of the code that comes in here by default. If you don't do this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, and what we do want to do uh, whenever we are having our own classes in a package is that someone may end up having their own class named sample toolkit in another package or Unity may have one that's called sample toolkit. So what you want to do is create some namespaces for your, your, your tools. So let's name this something that's pretty semantic. Um, Grinator dot sample kit. That's cool. Let's, let's keep it consistent. Sample tool kit. Or let's call it tools, for example. And your class just goes in here, just like that. Okay, so that's all you need to do for getting one of your classes set up. Now, if we go into committing our changes, all we want to commit from this, let's get rid of all these things, is the runtime folder and the package.json and the runtime and all these meta files because we need to have everything in here, all the meta files as well, and the package.json. That's all we need to commit here. We do not need to actually commit any other files here. So initial commit. And then I'm going to push this up to master, which going back into Git, we see that there's a runtime folder which does have our sample toolkit.cs file in it, as well as the Git ignore we had before, uh, the package.json we just made. So this is good. This is what we want our package to look like when we've pushed this up to Git. Now let's see if we can import this into a sample project. I'm using a completely different uh, Unity project over here. It's one that I'm working on in my own time, but it works the same. Whenever you open the package manager, you can add a Git repository this way with adding the URL in here. So I could just go over to, uh, you know, get this URL, open up the project I'm in, paste that URL there and click add. You need would go to fetch that from Git, assuming you have your credentials set up properly. You can see it's pulling the package I just made. And now you'll see we have a ProRiner sample Unity package, which is the name we said description, the author, and the package name is now imported into your project. So by default, <laughs> Unity does not have the ability to view versions of Git repositories with, if they're from Git. If they're from Unity, it does have that ability. So all these preview packages of the input system, you can view right out of the box for Unity. If you want to be able to view different versions or tags or releases for your Git repository, you'll need to add in the UPM Git extension. The URL for adding this into your Unity project is in the description below, but I highly recommend you adding this in because it's just so much easier to then update your version, to change branches. It's, it basically gives you all the functionality you can get for a Unity package, but for a Git package of your own. I do wanna to prove to you that it's actually imported into the project. If you go under next to your assets folder, there's a packages folder. Under there will be all the packages that you have in your project, Unity and your own Git repositories alike, as well as any other extensions you have. Here's the one that we had from before. And under the runtime package is the sample toolkit mono behavior class. So what I can do is go here and go to add the name of that package, which is gonna be sample toolkit. Let's go here, sample toolkit. And you'll notice I can't add it. I did miss a step actually. You need to add in the, uh, the assembly definition into your project for this to work. For Unity to recognize your package's code, you have to create an assembly definition like you see in this other package I have here under ProRinator Controllers 2D. Under Runtime, which is where your scripts are, there's a assembly definition here that has some information that tells Unity where your code is. We need to do the same thing for our project that we just did here. So let's open up the project we have here and you want to click on the runtime folder, go to create assembly definition. The name of this doesn't matter, but I like to keep it just, you know, consistent. So ProRinator.Tools, I believe was what we called the namespace in here, right? Okay. So, and we want to edit this assembly definition. 
The nice thing is because I made it the same name as the namespace, this will work properly. But if you name this file some other, some other name, you just need to make sure that the namespace that your tools, that your code is in, is the same that it says for the name of the namespace. Now that we've added this in, let's go ahead and commit this to git. Don't keep any of these files. All we wanna do is under runtime, add the assembly definition and the meta file, adding in assembly definition. And let's push that up to git. Now under, under the runtime folder, you're gonna have prowriter.tools.asmdf, assembly definition. And now if we were to go into the other project we had open, go to package manager, and this is the important part. If you look under packages, we don't have this right now. We don't have the assembly definition because we haven't pulled the changes yet. If we didn't have this plugin, UPM git extension, we would have to delete this and then re-import the project. But the nice part is, so I can go to this package and I'm on the master branch and just click update to 1.0 master. And this updates to the master branch with the version of 1.0.0, whatever's on that branch. This is essentially doing a git pull for this version, this branch. And if we were to go to that game object and hit add component, now you see we actually do see our sample toolkit script. So that means this is now working. All right, guys, I hope this was really useful for you. Please use this if you plan on reusing your code. There's nothing worse than copying and pasting your code around. We all know that. And have a good one, guys.